prominent in my parents, uh, parents' farm that I grew up on. So. My name is Laura Boyd Close, and I'm a farmer or market gardener that sells on cow up. I'm also the secretary for the board of directors, and I recently started working for cow up as a community facilitator. Cowup is a nonprofit cooperative, and it was started in 2014 to serve local farmers who needed another way to sell their products. Um, it's an online farmers market, and it's cooperatively run by all of its members. But on a day-to-day -day basis, what Cowup is is a website, uh, a physical warehouse, like where we are today. Um, and it's an aggregation distribution system that employs a handful of people um, and we sell members products for them to a community of, of customers in the Cowichan Valley. The thing that really makes Cowop so special is that it's all local, all Cowichan Valley. Uh, Sounds like they're depressurizing something. Yeah. <laughs> so Cowup was started by farmers, um, and now it's expanded. It's not just about farm fresh produce, although that is still the core of our business. We sell a lot of frozen fish and meat, and of course eggs. Uh, so it's not just vegetables, but it is everything that you would expect to find at a local farmer's market. It's just, it's online. And back in 2014, when this first started this idea was like really exciting it was r kind of the first of its kind um, nowadays there are lots of other competing online grocery services but none of them are unique like co-op is in that it's a cooperative there's no other cooperatively run online grocery services Go. Okay. And then that's your other uh, part? No, no, that's uh, Michelle. Oh, nice. And then this is for uh, for, for Dan. Okay. Modern stuff. Okay. Yeah, awesome. We're getting these peelies and these sweet special. One pork leg roast and yes. one pork loin chop. Tenderloin loin and clear. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'm personally interested in being involved with a cooperative because I'm a small market gardener. I'm not a farmer, like on a big scale. Um, and I believe that small scale farming can, or small scale market gardening, um, can be really effective in, in meeting local food needs. Um, and I got into small scale market gardening because I thought that it was a sustainable, way of um, producing food for communities and I'm really interested in working at the community scale maybe a municipal level not so much states or um, international corporations uh, I'm a little bit of an anarchist I guess What's your favorite time of year in the greenhouse? Uh, I think the spring like April. April. <laughs> Specifically the week of April 20th. It's my birthday week. Yep. Um, flowers, like, that's really the beginning of a lot of blooms. Um, we do a lot of plant propagation too, so we really like, you know, it's full of green stuff all year round in here, which is really nice. We call it the California room. And like a lot of peppers. And then some cucumbers and tomato plants as well in that short bed there. And but he's a busy guy. They have two young kids, so compared to us, they're not in the garden as much.
goes down into that wheelbarrow. This is more important in the summer when there's like a drought. Mm. We save every last drop of water. It works for us. It's mobile, it's easy, but like if you were a working farm and producing stuff at like four or five times the scale, you'd have a much bigger wash station with, with actual drainage and it'd probably be covered and you know? Yeah, I like that personal connection that you get. It's not the same as at the farmer's market because everyone's kind of like shopping from home in their own little world. But you do get to know people. Sometimes I can get it in the first try. Why would you want to eat spinach from California if you can get it three kilometers away, you know? This is the Somna, or the traditional site of longhouses, um, an old village site, which in the local Hokaminam language was called Somna. Now it's called Somnos. That's the anglicized version, but it's actually Somna. And there's Somnos Marsh just there. All of the water from our property eventually drains down into Avril Creek. That's a sacred mountain. This is a sacred site of longhouses in the past. And so I'm just like acutely aware every time that I'm here looking at, you know, enjoying the beautiful scenery and stuff. I'm aware that I kind of have a responsibility to honor the, the history of the place. And but I love food. I love, I love eating all the food that I grow. Like that's the main reason I got into it is because I just wanted to eat food that came from my backyard. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not an animal farmer. I, I grow vegetables, but animals are an important part of our system because we're, we're harvesting their manure. I've been a vegetarian for most of my life and I stopped being a vegetarian when I realized that animals were actually an important in, an integral part of our food system because, like I said, their manure provides fertilization for the soil. Grazing can help actually regenerate overexploited pasture land and so on and so on. And so I'm actually really happy to know where my meat is coming from. When I buy it on the cow op, like those are my friends taking care of those animals. I've know, I know the animals have had a good life. I know all of the food that they're eating. I can actually like picture the field that they lived in for their whole life while I'm eating that burger, um, which is important to me. Like a, that kind of, that level of connection to the food that I'm eating is really important to me. It makes it like, there's, there's the ethical imperative for me um, because the food that you eat isn't like, doesn't, it's not produced in a vacuum. It's real human lives, real animal lives, real plant lives. And so I think it's important to, you know, even if it might be a little bit more expensive, it's really important to me anyway, to honor that, the lives that go into our food. Yeah, so yeah, I, I source all of my meat through cow op and my eggs and whatever I can't grow at home, I'm getting on cow op. I do still go to save on foods because like I said, avocados and coffee and chocolate. But I think the time has come for, for all of us to really rethink our relationship to those things and you know, ask, ask ourselves if we really need them. Or maybe it's just a special treat you get now and then. It's not like a staple. It's a hard ask, but that's kind of what Cowop stands for. Really rethinking your relationship to your food and getting to know your farmers or your food producers in a way that makes every meal a little bit more like meaningful, right?
think everyone should try to eat local food as much as possible to decrease their carbon footprint, to decrease the, the amount of miles their food has to travel. Um, it's an environmental imperative. I think there's a, an economic imperative to, and a social imperative to ensure that the people closest to you, like geographically, <laughs> are taken care of. And that means giving them your money instead of giving Walmart your money. Okay, my name is Laura Boyd Close. I'm a small scale grower that sells fresh vegetables on Cowop. I'm a member of Cowop. Uh, I'm the secretary of the board of directors and I'm the community facilitator. So what's most important to me, I think I'll speak as the community facilitator right now. It's it's building our collective capacity. That's what's top of my mind. I think Cowop has a lot of potential. I think a lot of people are really excited about the idea of Cowop, but getting our our collective uh, getting everyone on the same page, figuring out what we all want. You know, there's 80 odd members, so it's a lot. Finding consensus about where we're headed as a cooperative, what our strategy is gonna be business-wise, that's a big challenge. And I think it's really important that we, we can continue to, to work together. We have lots of meetings and conversations and, um, and just really get that involvement and engagement from our community in a broad sense, not just our members, but also our customers, our staff who are so invested. Um, being able to get everyone together in a room again, we haven't been able to do that for a couple of years. That's really important to me. I wanna see more connections um, and just lay foundations for a whole new decade of co-op. You're welcome.